tuning to our channel today. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, appendicitis, a very very commonly tested condition in examinations and also in general population. A very very common condition. It affects like 10% uh, of the population. There are some points very very important to understand this condition. Now appendicitis is the most common abdominal surgical emergency. It affects, as I said earlier, it affects like 10% of the population. So it's the most common abdominal surgical emergency. And uh, you know how it starts. It starts with abdominal pain. And uh, to be precise, it starts in that uh, periumbilical area and then moves to the right lower quadrant. But as you know, the position of appendix, it changes in people. So that characteristic uh, presentation may not be seen in every patient, okay? So most commonly, it happens between 10 and 30 years and it is initiated by the obstruction of the appendix by a fecalith. So the appendix is obstructed by a fecalith or a foreign body or a neoplasm. And then that obstruction causes intraluminal pressure, venous congestion, infusion and thrombosis of uh, intramural vessels. So if you do not treat at, this, at that point, that uh, leads to gangrene and that the gangrene leads to perforation and perforation leads to peritonitis and if untreated the patient can die. So appendicitis um, is such a fatal disease if left untreated. Now as I said earlier the pain starts in the periumbilical area and then moves to the right lower quadrant. It is worsened by walking or coughing. Now, almost all patients have uh, nausea with one or two episodes of vomitings. Now, protracted vomiting or vomiting that begins before the onset of pain, you should think of other conditions because in appendicitis, first you will see abdominal pain and then the vomiting, okay? So the other things are um, some of these patients develop uh, constipation and some develop uh, diarrhea and the low-grade fever is typical. So you say low grade fever, remember that. If the patient has high fever, you should think of uh, other conditions. Now, what do you find on physical examination? Localize the tenderness with guarding in the right lower quadrant area. So if you do gentle palpation, even with one finger, and uh, you can point the location. And you can also ask the patient to cough. When the patient coughs, he will tell you the location of the pain because that is where the peritoneal inflammation happens. And if you do the light percussion, you will elicit that rebound tenderness you see in these uh, patients. So in the physical examination, you are seeing those things. And there are other signs like soya sign when you do the passive extension of the hip or obturator sign when you do the passive flexion and internal rotation of the hip joint. So remember that the uh, the tenderness in the right lower quadrant or at the McBurney's point that is between right lower quadrant and umbilicus. So tenderness at the right lower quadrant or at the McBurney's point, the soya sign that is the pain with the extension of the hip, then the obturator sign that is the pain with the internal rotation of the hip joint. And if you do the labs, you will see um, uh, leukocytosis with the neutrophilia and ultimately the definitive diagnosis is CT scan or ultrasound. So if you do CT scan or ultrasound you see that uh, inflammation around uh, the appendix. Sometimes um, uh, you will see an extensive inflammation in these patients and as I said that inflammation if uh, obstructed or not treated it can lead to gangrene and that gangrene can lead to perforation. And the other point is uh, these patients, because of the change of the position of the appendix, they can present with a different kind of symptoms. Sometimes the appendix can go 
as far as the right upper quadrant and when it is in the right upper quadrant the clinical picture changes even when it is in the right middle quadrant the clinical picture changes especially in uh, uh, pregnant patients when the uterus enlarges the appendix changes its position and uh, these patients present with altogether different kind of uh, symptoms on the clinical picture so those are the uh, most common points when you think about uh, the clinical uh, examination now what about the treatment the treatment is basically appendectomy so appendectomy is the definitive treatment you can do it with laparoscopy or uh, laparotomy it doesn't matter the ultimately you need to remove the appendix what about when there is a uh, gangrene and perforation and uh, abscess formation it's a controversial thing some people prefer doing a surgery some say just to give IV fluids and the intravenous antibiotics and uh, wait for some time and uh, then do the laparoscopy removing the abscess collection and after like six weeks go for appendectomy to prevent the recurrence of appendicitis so there is a wide range of things but uh, for our purposes the most common um, uh, treatment is appendectomy the other most important points are the differential diagnosis it's uh, so wide viral gastroenteritis that presents with uh, similar symptoms can you can get confused with it and uh, other gynecological conditions like uh, uh, a sudden twisting of the ovary tube of ovarian abscess can confuse us so in young sexually active woman you should always think about gynecological causes because pelvic inflammatory disease tube of ovarian abscess and uh, um, and also the one I mentioned before that is uh, um, um, what is it tuber ovarian abscess and uh, pelvic and under uh, twisted over twisted ovary so the when they when the ovary twists suddenly that can also give the same kind of picture so that is about uh, appendicitis uh, please post your comments and visit our website at www.drpaul.org that is www.drpaul.org those of you who are taking USML clinical skills I request you to buy this book USML Smasher it became uh, a standard book nowadays for thousands of students around the world so USML Smasher I recommend this book because so many tips were given that help you to easily pass this examination thank you very much